everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your art surfer, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how we can paint this reborn sunset beach scene. I'm really excited about this. So many of you guys love the water scenes, but wanted something that was maybe like a little simpler to do and a little more beginner friendly for a more beginner stage of beginner. So I worked really hard, and this is one of the designs that I came up with. I've got a lot of cool ways that we're going to do this that I'm really excited to share with you. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. Sometimes you guys call him Stunt Hands, so if you see that in chat, that's what's going on. He's going to be tracking me with our cameras so that during this live stream, you're going to see every part of the action of what I'm doing. Because the point of this is that you get to paint this at home. I mean, it's really cool to watch me paint it, but at the end of the day, at some point, we hope you paint this and create this for yourself, which is like the whole goal of the channel. Um, so... We're definitely going to make sure that we explain every stage, all the materials. If you check the description below, you're going to see a lot of information, links to our website. Um, it's going to have the complete materials list. So like, you know what you get. But of course, you know, you can exchange brands or do different things. Try to stay in the same color family if you can. That really helps your final result. I'm excited for obvious reasons, which I'm sure you're reacting to in chat. And I will Everyone be reading later. Everyone loves it. <laughs> They're so excited. Do you want to see the back? Oh my gosh, they are loving it. This is, everyone says your hair looks so on fleek. It was not it's, intentional to match the painting. That was just like no. a, a side event of something that happened <laughs> but in my life. Yes, everyone <laughs> thinks it is epic and they love it. Epic? So, epic. Is it mermaid a unicorn enough? It is, is definitely. Okay. Per Very cool. Awesome. Epic. Wow, I've never gotten a new hairstyle and been so nervous. <laughs> you know what? For like debuting I, it or it's, anything. It's so awesome. I think we probably should, you know, add some bubbles and dance and let them dance. Thank you guys for coming and joining us. You know, we love, love, love being able to do this. And as you can say, we're an especially celebrating today mood today. You know, we <laughs> Mama, she, Texas snowflakes are back. We got Texas snowflakes back. We got our music back. We got all sorts of things going on. So <gasps> thank you guys for joining us. We're going to have a great time today. I'm going to turn this back over to Cinnamon and let us get <laughs> back <I> over. <laughs> to our sort of normally scheduled painting. Goodness. Where we teach you how to paint. If you're brand new here and you're like, Bubbles hair, what the heck is going on? We do actually teach art in the middle of this, but we try to keep it light because uh, we try to keep this fine art fun so that it's fun art, if that makes sense. That way you guys don't get so overwhelmed by everything. And it's important to keep these things light. It helps you relax. It helps you let go. It helps you be confident in your result. Let me go over the materials real quick. I have an 11 by 14 canvas. Uh, well, it's really a board. It's a particle board here. These come in economy packs. You could do stretch canvas. You could do an artist board. Whatever you're painting on today, if it's for acrylic paint, will be good. We like to put wishes on our canvas, and today's wishes are for Angela M., who's wishing for a really good and healing uh, surgery. We want great test results and good news about health for Jennifer B. Cassie, um, just really good health for her best friend and her mom. Jessica M. is wishing for her little brush, who's having a surgery. So we're going to wish for the best doctors, the best healing, and a fast recovery. Jan needs strength and resilience and hope for a peaceful future. And Rachel wishes to cope with a massive loss. So of course, we wish you strength and support and loving people surrounding you during that, Rachel. Over here on our materials, I got a little crazy with my palette today. I don't really know what was happening. I just kept putting out paint. So I have titanium white, docks purple, phthalo blue, phthalo green, cad yellow medium, quinacridone magenta a little yellow ochre, and a little burnt sienna. This is heavy body paint for acrylic. I'm going to be using bigger brushes in the beginning. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of moisten my canvas and brush my wishes back into the background so they don't, you know, bleed into the final result. <laughs> like sometimes they'll do if the pigment's real strong or doesn't really go with the painting that you're doing later. I'm using watercolor pencils when I put my wishes in. I like to have them around to actually sketch on canvas with. You have to be careful. Uh, somebody had mentioned this to me, and then I did some testing. These economy boards from large uh, chains can warp if you miss them. Not all of them, and it would take a lot of water, but that's a thing that absolutely can happen. So the reason we're going to be using our biggest brush is so we can get big wide strokes and wide sweeps. So we can start implying the sky and the water 
just using the natural effects of the paint and the way it wants to streak and go up the canvas. So we're making the paint work for us instead of us working for the paint. But before we can do that, we've got to make our phthalo turquoise. And our phthalo turquoise is fairly fun and easy to make. It's basically you take a little bit of your green and your blue, almost a one to one mixture. If you go a little bit more green, then it'll be a little more like, you know, the Bahamas, a little bit more blue, goes a little more grease. So depending on what kind of little ocean escape you're trying to create. And I think one to one is uh, Agent Coulson's favorite escape, Tahiti. It's a magical place. I've been there recently, <laughs> as John will tell you. Hmm. And I've got a little little biology in my paint here. I see a little hair in the mix. So I'm going to just drag that out if I can. It to come out. Up oh, there it is. Look. Ha, rescued. <laughs> <laughs> not that it's not good to leave future conservators, you know, a little uh DNA, right? Mm hmm A nice amount here. I like to mix the paint, honestly. I, I indulge myself a little bit with this because it's just very fun for me to mix it. There we go. Once you have that nicely incorporated, you clean off your palette knife. You can do that with a wet wiper or a towel. I'm going to put that to the side. And it's good to get a very big brush and work from your lightest color. Now, you're going to notice that at the horizon line on our reference photo, that it's a very bright light yellow, and then it comes up into this blue sky. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a hand here. And I'm going to come going? a bit above my halfway point. So if my halfway point is like particularly there, just a little bit above it because I want more ocean than sky, but just a smidge. It's not dead on halfway. And I'm going to make a little demarcation line. Mm. There we go. So Pam was asking. Hi, Pam. If you use graphite, uh, could you use the spray workable fixative as a sealant? No. Sealer? No, not, not for canvas. I would use like a light spray varnish, like a matte varnish, and just barely hit it. Some of the fixatives are not uh, great complements to acrylic paint chemistry. Not all of them, but it's a fixative by fixative thing. It's really about all the ingredients that go into acrylic paint. When you really understand rheology and all the chemistry of acrylic paint, you start getting reluctant to add anything into it that's not really made for it. But just a little matte varnish that sprays will work like a fixative on that. And I've also even brushed on like a glazing medium to hold a, a pencil fixative. So it works kind of. It's okay. You just want to seal it down. I'm going to get my big brush. I think Your let's get brush. the number 30. This is a nice big wide brush. I have examples of nice big wide brushes here that you could use for this technique. Any of those would work. I'm going to get my big, big brush wet and drag off the extra water. I'm going to get a little of the yellow into the edges of my bristles here. I don't want too much of it. And I'm going to come over to my white. Just a little bit of this. And the first part of this that I'm going to come just above my ocean line, I'm going to sweep up. A little bit of that yellow. Can you guys see how I'm curving that stroke? Oh, yeah. It's just a little bit of this yellow kind of sweeping up. And it can be a little bit streaky. You do want it to be light. I'm going to get a little more white onto my brush. If I need to, I'll dip in water to improve flow. But I don't want a brush that pulls in so much water it gets soppy. Oh. That'll make my painting experience not as fun. All right. So... That's my lightest color, and that's the hardest one for me to keep. By putting it on now, I can set myself up for success. It's about, you know, a hand width wide of that. Now I can come and get a little of my turquoise loaded onto my brush and come right back in to the white. Now that small amount of yellow is actually pretty complementary to all of this. I'm dipping into my water, and you're going to notice I'm flipping my brush. And I'm going to come from the top and back into this yellow with this curved stroke. Can you guys see this? Oh, yeah. So that's what we're doing. Just curving it. And it's okay that it picks up a little yellow. It actually makes the sky really rather pretty. And I'm just working that in. I don't want to take my yellow away. I need it for later. That's good to leave some behind and curve that stroke. Just curving it with that turquoise. See the little streakies in it? So nice. A little bit on the edge here. You can see I don't come right to the middle of my paint. 
because that would overload my brush. And you can see that I also like to flip it. That helps put a lot of paint inside the brush so that when I come in, I have enough to make the stroke. You don't want to not be able to make the stroke. Just this very loose what we're doing. I can flip over here and add just a little more turquoise where I didn't cover sky. Don't worry about being perfect in this space or any of those concerns. Take a deep breath. Let it out. Know that you've got this. Coming back in just a little more turquoise to the top of my sky, but I'm keeping that curved stroke. Acrylic paint dries, and once it dries, it's really down, so it doesn't blend as much after that. So that's why sometimes I'll work a little quickly is because I'm trying to get that paint up on the canvas while two areas of the paint are still wet. And in this particular case, I'm going to take a sippy sippy of my coffee. Mm, me too. And I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I'm going to let my paint dry just a little bit. Now, I will say, Little, little Brush Jack gave you an art high five. I saw... Hi, so Jack. We've got so many of our lovely community here. I saw Alan here and Kim Hi, and Alan. Mona and the and Mr. And, 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 and Mrs. Butcher and Joe and Waz and Ramblin and all our folks. I mean, like just like there's a, a, like It looks all like the, the notification are. gnomes it, have been it, working it, very hard for those do. of you who got notifications from the gnomes. The gnomes. Now, go ahead, down thumb me for that. That was goofy. <laughs> no, no, no. If you go to our website, if you click on the link in the description down below, you will find information to our website where you can learn about the notification gnomes who That's will right. notify you. We don't need to bug YouTube about that anymore. No, we got <laughs> we our got own it gnomes out. on it. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm kind of letting the yellow paint dry just a little bit. <laughs> just to, because we had the air conditioner on. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put this back here. If you have a very hand, it'll work. Another good trick for what I'm about to do is a... Um, paper towel because they're very squared. I'm rinsing out my brush and I'm putting it to the side. And I'm going to get a slightly m smaller brush for this next part uh, so that I can work a couple weird little edges. I guess I'll get like a number 10 bright as I reach over with one hand. So this is a number 10 bright, similar shape brush. I'm going to dip my brush in the water. I'm going to come here, loading up with my turquoise. And this will be almost pure turquoise. And I'm just going to come right underneath here. And make a nice little horizon line. So the thing about water is a horizon line is flat. And that T-square helps me do that. Because I might not necessarily always get that free-handed easily. And that really gives me a hand. So that's a fun little bit of work. Now the next thing that I can do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to load back up on my brush. And I'm going to come about... From the right hand side, let's say it's almost like a three fingers down, I'm going to make a little mark. And then I'm going to go above my thumb, which is about a half inch. So you've got a couple inches to about a half inch. And I'm going to show you a neat calligraphy style trick that works with water. So this brush is a square, right? And I'm going to come back. I'm going to try to not move the head of the brush. But I'm going to pull back. And by doing this, I'm going to create little water waves that can come out. Can you guys see how the brush did that work for me? Yeah. It's a really lovely thing that the brush will do for you. While it's still here, I'm going to go ahead and get my brush wet, load a little more paint onto it. And at this upper back space, I'm going to go ahead and just brush back and forth. You guys see how we're doing? Just back and forth horizontally at first. This is our distant water, and our distant water will be very horizontal. And that's really all I've got to do for that right there. Just try to make it as horizontal and level as I can in the distance. But as I'm going to come up here, I'm going to go ahead and sort of make that little implied space again. Just like that clear. See how I do that? I just let the brush do that work. Everything in front of that line that I just made is going to be a little bit brighter and a little bit greener. And to make it greener, I'm going to come get this yellow and put it right into my turquoise. This is that warm water, that escape water, right? I'm going to get a lot more white into that mix so that it's light. Get nice and light. 
and I'm going to come along here. I'm going to make sure that this little wave space that I had out is a little more green. Just brushing that back and forth. If you need a little more white into it, go ahead and grab some. I'm adding water to improve flow. Oh, there it is. That's just perfect. And since this is still a little bit wet behind, I'm going to get a nice blend between these two spaces. And this beginning work helps us really put in the foundation of our water so later we have a much easier time. We're trying to talk about our ocean. Yeah. Look at that. Almost already pretty oceany when you look. Let's rinse out. We're going to do something a little bit fun. We're going to get a little of our aqua into our yellow ochre. I need to put out, I think, a small amount of more white. And I'm going to get just a smidge. And this is important. When I say smidge, I mean a small amount. See, it's just on the tips of my brush when I work it into my sand color here. There we go. A little bit of white. Now, can I ask you a quick color question here? You can't. Well, okay. Oh, okay. No, go ahead. It was like, I didn't know if you were like. Well, let, let me do this first do and this. then ask me the color question, okay. if, question. If that's okay. Yes, yes. If we can. I want to come in and paint the sand color. This is my first layer of sand color all along where this water and the beach meet. And you can see how I did the same sort of drag. And then as soon as I get this base one in, then we can go back and get that question, babe. Kurt, perfect. Yeah, I just wanted to get it in before the well, that's what I realized. paint I, went somewhere. I asked you right as you loaded your brush. And I, was I like, know, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, I'm going to add a little more white to it. As we're coming out to this corner edge, I'm definitely going to want it to be lighter, guys. And I'm going to let it be very streaky. Because wet sand has a lot of color in it, doesn't it? You can even get a little bit of your burnt sienna into the mix. And what you're seeing me do is just make sure all my canvas is covered. All right, all my canvas is covered. This is number 10, Ruby Satin Bright. You can use any brush that you have, but that's what I'm using right now. And then as soon as I get this in, I'm going to treat myself to a sip of coffee. Actually, I'm, I think I need to get the coffee heated. The AC cools it down so much. It does. Now make sure you give yourself some nice, long little streak marks. You don't want to overwork it because you want to see all that little... Base, you've already done the underpainting of your beach. We're moving along. I like I had time to say hello, answer questions, do all that stuff. Um, Man, this go ahead and pop the question at me, John. Oh, okay, so the question was, uh, do, 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 let me scroll back up here. Ooh, it's about blue. Okay, blue. it's Paula. She's using, um, she's using student grade paints mm -hmm. and uh, doesn't have phthalo blue, but she does have phthalo green and primary blue. Would that come something close? Yeah, you could add a little th uh, primary green to your prime, uh, phthalo blue to your primary green, and you could get a really good <laughs> ocean aqua color. you got to realize uh, that there's all these around. biases, and I can't see the paint. Yeah. But the truth is, is like, most important thing in your painting is first value, how light or dark something is. The hues, that's the way we talk about color, you can change those up a lot and still get a good result, as long as you're not, like, being hard on yourself, like, my blue doesn't look exactly like that blue, you're good. As long as you're like, okay, well, I'm changing it up, and that's cool. I'm cool with it. Everyone who sees the painting will be cool with it. Then you're okay, you know. But thalithicane pigment is definitely a unique pigment. So um, if you want it to be exact, 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 that might be a little frustrating. But if you're like, I just need it to look like an ocean and look good and hang on my wall and I got to feel proud of it, you're golden. Can I get you a microwave my coffee? Yeah. You? Hold on. I didn't. So sure. And I'm never nervous. I'm zip. I know I'm going to get so many coffee. 
So, yeah, that's an important thing to think about when you're working with colors and you're doing stuff is that, you know, these things are, they're important and they matter, but they're not like where a painting hangs or falls apart. And I do encourage people to use the colors that are listed in the description. Uh, but I would never like, I know some teachers will like remove people from a class that they don't have the exact color list. I would never do that. Uh, obviously not on YouTube, I wouldn't be empowered to, but even in like a workshop, I would probably encourage my student to like work more on their value, their light and darks than so much exact hues, especially the beginning stage. Cause I think the first thing to master is how light or dark something is. And then you kind of work out the color theory after as a fun way to take all that tonality and make a rainbow of value. Weird soapbox that I'm on today. Mm. Mm. All right. All right. All right. Let's get back into our sky. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get, I'm going to rinse out this brush. I'm going to grab. <laughs> The reason I'm rinsing out and grabbing a different brush is that I really want um, a very clean brush for the next little bit of what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure my water is clean enough. It can have a little bit of pigment in it, but you wouldn't want it to be very, very, very dirty or anything. I'm going to come and load some of my quinacridone into my brush and my yellow as well. You'll notice that as I'm pulling out, I'm very loosely mixing these. I don't want to over mix them too much. I'm going to get a lot of white into my brush. And look at how that's loaded. Let me get some more on the other side. See how we got that loaded? That's what you call a brush when you've got a lot of paint into it. And I'm going to come from here and I'm going to be sweeping up like that. And then I have another little cloud bank that I'm going to be sweeping up over here. And so to work that, I've got to come, I'm going to leave this yellow area pretty yellow. And I'm going to come and pull like that. Can you guys see that? And I'm let, how I'm letting it streak and I'll flip my brush. Ooh, that got dark, but that's okay. I don't want to lose any of this. If I do anything, I will blend it, but I don't want to over mix it on the canvas. I'm going to come back. This is a number 10 Bristolon. I'm um, Cambridge. This is number 10 Cambridge. It's a mix of bristles and synthetic filaments. Let me get some more white onto my brush and a little more pink. I'm working this out. And I'm going to just, again, very loosely brush this up. And I think I will leave just a little bit of the canvas unpainted. To my right. If I go over it much more, I'm going to lose too much of my streak. So let's come back in and get some white onto there and make sure I've got a nice little sweeping, streaking, cloudy space. Now, up at the top here, I'm going to get some more quinacridone. Go ahead and pull some of this down. Notice how I'm making sure that these edges are soft. And you can see I'm not pressing very hard with my brush. And this is real fun for me. At the top, I'm going to go ahead and just brush up like this real loose. Look, I'm not being real picky. Maybe bring some over here. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Because clouds are kind of crazy. They are crazy. Make some more here. Crazy clouds. I'm going to let that have a dry for a minute. Right now, not getting into it too heavily is really going to be on my side. I'm going to come back over to my yellow and a little pink, grab a bunch of white. And over here, have an interesting little fellow. I'm going to come across on a horizontal line. And then I'm going to just sweep up. Maybe even a little more yellow here. Sweep up this brush stroke. See, I'm sweeping it up. It's up about three fingers. Not getting crazy with it. I'm not going to the top of my canvas. Now I'm going to get a little more of my magenta. And I'm going to just make some more of those little crazy curvy strokes. See how we're doing at the top of the cloud? Mm-hmm. 
But I think as long as you keep it out of your head that you're painting a cloud, you're going to be your happiest. Yeah. Because where we get in our, we get in our own head space and we think of clouds very emotionally instead of artistically. And when we're thinking about something artistically, we don't think about what it is. We think about how we feel about it and we think about how it reflects light. Mm. But I don't go, clouds are made of water. I don't, I'm not thinking necessarily about all those things initially. I'm just trying to think about the ways I'm going to paint those values as I'm painting. So I'm going to rinse out. Fun, fun stuff. Now at the tops of these clouds, I'm going to take a little bit of my dox and my quinacridone and mix them together. And I'm going to just add this dark value, some of what I have going on. Now, right like now. A little bit. Uh, you have just at the top. Uh, what I will say, Cinnamon, is the, the colors that you're putting on are much brighter than the pictures in the picture picture. Yeah. They are much more vivid. They are. <laughs> I think that's probably because the picture you took for the picture in picture was snapped with an iPhone. It, it could be. So I'm going to guess that it probably is not as uh, vivid as the image up here. I wonder if I can fix that at all. All right. Well, we're okay because we still have another layer. We're going to come up here with this right here, this dark value. Is that getting closer? Yeah, maybe. Uh, here we go. I think you're getting good. Getting closer. All right, from a photography guy. There goes the light. Now, as I come back here, I'm going to add a little more purple. Purpley purple. You know, and go ahead and you can pull some of these colors. Look, just softly down into your cloud. Fun time in your cloud's life right now. This is about to get real crazy. So rinse your brush out in your dirtiest water. I always like to keep two jugs of water out. All right, and I'm going to come here and we're going to start softening these out. So let's put out some more white paint. A good trick that you can do is if you've got gesso and you're, and you're trying to upgrade to your titanium white, like I often recommend, you can in some of this switch it to gesso if you need to. Where's your brush down a little bit faster? I'm going to load my brush with some white. I'm going to get just a smidge of the yellow into here. And then I'm going to grab some pink. See how we're doing? Very light. Oh, there we go. We're going to come even lighter than that. Go real light. And let's lightly brush this bit of soft. Oh, look. I'm not even going to change that. Do you see where the little bits of yellow and everything oh, went yeah. off that? Don't ever. When you see those moments happen, don't you second guess yourself. I'll come back here and I'll, I'll brush a little bit back up. I'm keeping my yellow still showing. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a smidge. Less is so much more here. Look at that. Just woo, woo, woo. That's all I got to say to you. You're just in pretty clouds. It's glowing in the breeze. Okay, I'm sorry. A lot more yellow. <laughs> 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 I'm fine. Everything's good. I like to grab that this little bit of yellow. Happens. This is what happens to princesses. They get these multicolor hairdos and then they start singing. Just ask any Disney princess. It's like an I automatic thing. That definitely am not Disney approved. All right. So we're going to come up this front. I've got this all loaded right here. I'm going to come at the front of the cloud. Brush, 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 brush. And I'm going to just make sure I sweep up and then I'm going to go ahead and add a little of this light color right there. As I'm coming back, I can always grab some more pink into this and just lightly pull that down again it's going to be important not to overwork and overwork means that you go over like the same thing too much again and again there's some more white there we go so now we've got that nice 
front of that that's just sort of out there. And I might even, just looking at this particular one, soften this edge here so it's a little more cloudy. See how I'm doing? Now, and why I'll does just your... pull that forward just a bit. Why does your paint flow off that brush so, so fluidly and easily? Okay, so some of it is the quality of the brush. Some of it is that I have flipped my brush during the load. So a lot of it, I mean, if you look, there's a lot of paint in that brush. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Messy. But you see my point. There's a lot in there. When I load like that, it puts a lot in there. I have a high quality paint with a lot of pigment, and I've thinned with just enough water so that it flows off really well, even though it's heavy body paint. It's like a little dance. Little dance we do with our paint. This was fun, but it's about to get funner. You guys ready for it to get funner? Yeah. All right, let's rinse out really, 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 really well. And we're gonna come up and we're gonna do these low clouds. And to do the low clouds, I'm gonna do an interesting thing. I'm gonna start with my white and I'm gonna load up my white. See how I'm flipping and loading? I'm gonna come here. And I'm going to brush up this direction. I kind of stay a little bit. I like to leave a little of the yellow. You don't want your paint to be too wet. I'm just brushing up a little bit of this white paint. I'm going to come on the corner of this brush. And I'm going to come up. See how I'm pushing up? And I pushed up again. Maybe we'll do a distant little guy right there, and we're just pulling that down. Try to make sure that you're not cloning, that you've got interesting, different little shapes that are happening. Oops. I just literally wiped that with my finger. All right. Now that that's there, I can come and get just a smidge of yellow onto my brush. I can brush that up. See how I'm brushing that up? Yeah. Just a smidge. And I'm going to go ahead and get just a smidge, oh gosh, so little of the pink on there. I don't want that much. If I get too much, I'm not going to get the effect I want. And I'm going to just make sure that I, oh, that one went a little pink, but that's good. Let's just roll with it. We're going to brush that down. And see how we're brushing those clouds, kind of feathering them in? Yeah. Feather those in. I'm going to get a little more pink on there. And how I'm going to work it through is I'm going to go back and forth, working it into the bristles. Go ahead and get some white into what you've got. And I'm going to come forward here. And I'll go ahead and brush this side up much more pink. See how I'm doing? But I'm leaving the yellow underneath there. A little more pink. Work it in. And get some white. Now let's come up here and work that corner again. And brush that down. All we had to do to that. There we go. Maybe it's a little more work it in. I come right up here and brush that down. Can you see both of your little cloud banks? They're sort of bent into each other. They're like layered over. I'm going to put this brush to the side to let it have a little dry. And I'm going to get a clean brush, maybe a smaller brush. I'm going to get uh, just this number eight. And I'm going to get a smidge of water onto it. This is the Cambridge. I'm going to load it up with pure white on both sides. And I'm going to come to the top of this cloud. And I'm going to just give this one a little extra white and pull down some of these streaks. See how it's just white? Put some right here. And you can come over if you want and do the same thing on the other side. Push this little one up and pull that down. Look at that. Now we've got these little cloud banks that are back there. I can get a little of my pure yellow onto my brush. 
And right here, I'm going to go back and forth, and then I'm going to just tap. See, I'm just tapping. I'm just making a little bit of sunlight right here. All I'm going to do, tap, 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 a little focus sunlight. It's going to be really nice for me. Rinse, 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 rinse. When I go to uh, do my ocean and do my stuff. Now, if I can trouble John for some water, I'm going to sip some coffee. Maybe we do some bubbles because, dude, we did clouds. We did it. Oh, yeah. We, well, should. we painted a sky. Yeah, we did it. Wait, wait. Here we go. Oh, Thank there you. they are. Now I still did it. I did it. I can make bubbles. You do it? Oh, there's bubbles. So my advice on these clouds is just to be so super chill with yourself. Just be like, ah, just, I'm just painting a little cloud. I think, you know, as long as you're staying away from the little round cotton balls, you're winning. You I know, it's all wiggling. Wiggling. But it's hard to wiggle and drink coffee. Let the bubbles go by. Let the summer flow in. Let the week's worries be put down. Oh. Enjoy our little clouds. Ah, oh, nice clean water. <laughs> Not so rough on me. We Don't rough house those bubbles on me, John. Those bubbles can be rough. They can be. <laughs> Lots of bubbles. <laughs> so many bubbles. Right, I'm going to get a cat's tongue. All right. So, look, guys. At Lots of brushes will work for this. Lots and lots of brushes will work for this. But let's just do, the, I'm going to do a number eight's cat's tongue. You could do a number eight bright. You could do a number eight round. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get my sand color up, which is my yellow ochre and some white, right? Just a little bit of that. And I'll add a smidge of purple to it. You guys see that? I'm dipping in water and I'm making sure the brush is quite loaded. Yellow and purple are something in art that's called a complementary color. And when you work them together at the right times, what you can end up with is some very lovely muted effects and colors. Yeah. I want to make sure that I've... Started to get this little purple value here. I'm letting my other brushes just have a little rest. Sometimes I change up brushes, not because you have to change up brushes, guys, but just so you know that good brushes are important, but not necessarily always a specific shape of brush. When we're regularly painting, there's very few times that we have to use a particular shape. And if you think back when all the brushes were handmade by artists, they weren't made like this. They were all rounds, right? So mm -hmm. how did Rembrandt do all that stuff? Obviously not from the shape of a brush. Now the other place I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get a little purple and a little of my aqua together. A little purple and a little aqua. And I'm going to come right here. Very... Mild, I'm gonna come right back into what I've already been painting. We're gonna do something crazy in a minute, but we gotta get the basis up here first. You do something crazy? In a minute. Can't imagine. No, it's gonna be really fun. <laughs> The reason I didn't get real specific with you guys about this edge is because we're going to do a trick that helps us make reflections feel more reflective. I'm going to rinse this out, and I'll get um, this number 10 braid that I had earlier. I'm going to get a little of my aqua onto my brush and a little of my purple. And let's lighten it with some white. Come from the wave, and I want you to do a thing. I want you to just, you're going to come and you're going to pull this down just a bit. We have to come back and put our, you guys see that? Yeah. We're pulling it straight down. One of the things that's really hard for new painters is to catch the reflections of the water. 
You know, this one I might get a little more aqua into. Get a little white, get a little more of your aqua, but it's got a bit of that purple mixed into it, right? And we're going to do a fun and interesting thing right now. See this as horizontal as you can. Little aqua, little purple, little aqua. I like to take my darker colors under my wave. Now, while this is still here, I'm going to get a little of the aqua, just pure aqua, under my wave. And I'm going to make sure that I shadow under this wave that I'm going to be putting here. You guys see that? Yeah. That's going to help us later. Just darken that. Not a particularly thick line, but it's there. Okay. Now I'm going to get just a little of my just aqua in there, and I'm going to brush back and forth, almost like it's a very thin paint, this direction. Fun stuff. So we've got these downward strokes and these back and forth strokes. We're going to let our brush strokes help us. Now, one thing to pay attention is where your reflection is happening. So if you have the sun here, Ooh. there's a line of light that's going to be running down this canvas. Pay attention to this when you're looking at your trip photos and your vacations. Uh, if you've got Google Play, photos, you know how it cycles through on your big TV. <laughs> Just like when you're looking at photos, pay attention to the lines of light. Where do the light reflections go? Because that's a place that can make or break a painting. So even if you're brand, brand, brand new to painting, you can, you can totally use your eyes and see it. So it's like it's something that you can do right now today to really like make big improvements in your art that will like kind of blow the minds of people around you. All right. So now that I know where that is, I can do a very, very cool thing. I can come in here and I can get a little yellow on my brush. I might get some white. If you have it, glazing medium is your friend. If you don't, just do thin. If you've got student paint, you're good. <laughs> on this one, it's one of the places where student paint helps you because it's very transparent. Right. I'm going to just come right here, and I know where that is, and I'm going to just, look at this. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make that mark right here. That's going to help us later. Now, I can always come in and tip with just a little more yellow on just the edges of my brush. Look how little's there. Such a fun trick. And it works so well to make everything look very wet. It does. All right. So now that I've got all that sort of laid out, well, that's going to make all my beaching super easy. One thing that I could do is take this time and get a little of my burnt sienna mixed into my yellow ochre. I'm going to get a bunch of my white into that. You can always grab a smidge of your magenta because everything sort of reflects everything else, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So knowing that and playing into that will really help you. And I'm going to just make my pink sand beaches. Right? Got to put this here because I've got to see my lines. I've got a really fun water line that's going to come back here. So I can come right like on this edge and say... Maybe some of that. And with that line. And then I'm going to take another line that comes like this. And you guys see it widen, widen out that leaves that reflection. Getting my white and everything. I'm going to just make all the rest beach, guys. A little dip in water. All the rest can be beach. Brown in that. That's okay. All it takes to get all the rest beach. And look at the way that some of the color underneath there shows through. 
Paint works for us. We don't work for the paint. Let it just be. Let it be happy. Look at that. Beach. Yeah. Now you have wet sand, wave rolling in, and beach. All the rest goes pretty fast. All right, so let's get this water in so that it's sort of awesome. We know we have our wonderful aqua. We're going to get some white into that. And make a nice little streak, right? Back here, just loosely paint another streak layer, just making sure things are horizontal. See what we're doing? That's all you got to do. Not hard, pretty easy, good to go. I'm going to take this. I'm going to get a lot more white into that and maybe a little bit of my yellow because this is that front water. A little more white to yellow. And I'm going to brush this in, just making this loosely. Now, as I'm coming up to the wave, notice I'm sort of curving and following the shoreline. There we go, just streaking it out. First, all we gotta do there. So now I've got a little bit of highlight, I've got a little bit of low. It's a little bit streaky. The water up front is lighter. Right, I'm just making sure I've got some lighter areas. Good stuff. I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to get a little of my wonderful aqua. And I'm going to do something kind of great. I'm going to get that into my quinacridone, grabbing a little bit of white. And you've got to find that, there it is, there's the mix. It's this crazy color. And I'm going to make sure that I lightly, this is a number eight camera, so I'm going to dry brush. Dry brush means I don't have a lot of water into the brush. I'm adding white, and you can see I'm just dry brushing. I'm right across here, even though I'm going to put that wonderful light back in. And the reason we're doing this color in the back is that an ocean, there's a little of my aqua into my quinacridone. If you're not familiar about what thalo turquoise and quinacridone mixes, this is such a wonderful time to find out it's a great color. Great. Rinsing out really well. I'll just probably hang in with this brush. I'm going to put a little more white out. I'm going to get my glazing liquid all on here. This particular case, I'll get a little of my quinacridone, not quite uh, the purple and phthalo into it, but a lot of white. Yeah, we're going. So it's it's white, but it's not like the whitest white you ever saw. And we're going to come here very loosely. Take a little wave. See how he made a little wave? You could have a little friend behind him. Let me. Look, just on the edge of my brush, making a little wave. And they kind of are going to, this is where they're going to start coming together. I'll make this just a little bit white right there. See how we do? Wipe, wipe, wipe. Now there's a little bit of the colors in there. I'm going to get a little of my purple into that. Macrodone. There we go. Now I'll get that mixed into the off-white. So this is a great way to do sea foam if you've never done sea foam. And as I'm coming here, I'm going to just very loosely make a little kind of see how these are rough strokes. Just tapping the brush in and out.
falling along the edge of this wave. Look, just coming back. The foam does what? It comes, it rushes up, doesn't it? Very dry brush. It's just wiggling it. Look, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Where am I at? I'm right here. I'm going to load up again. Get the white out. Go brush, brush, brush. Load up. Brush, 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 brush. Give ourselves another little... Right? Some sea foam coming up. That's what we want. We need a little sea foam coming up. Load up with just a little bit of white. Now we know where we've got our yellow. So as I come up here, boom, 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 I may help myself out for later. Just very lightly on the toe of my brush, that's the tip of the bristles, just make this back and forth streak. This is going to help my yellow be very, very bright as I come down. It's also going to help me remember where I'm going to be putting it as I go. I don't want to go back and forth, and I want this to be very light as a mark. So you're starting to see that reflection. I may take that reflection back a little bit further this way. But no. you don't want to get crazy with it. If you get crazy with the paint, it's going to pull it away from you in a way you may not like. I'm going to dip in water, take off the extra. They were asking, Oh yes. on, on a difficulty scale, one to three, where would this fall? I think this is one and a half to two hoot. One and a half to two hoot. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a little bit of mixing and there's some unusual colors you might not have in every kit. So it kind of raises it up. But I think the, the idea of just, and I, probably the hardest thing is maybe just relaxing and letting the paint be. Hmm. Kind of like me relaxing and letting my hair be. <laughs> and by the way, there's been, everyone says they love, 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 love the hair. There's been lots of folks who were like, who is that blue haired lady teaching on my, cha on my, my artist channel? And they turned around like, squeeze. The <laughs> Sherpa has blue, blue hair today. I do. I have, I have hair the color of my ocean. I'm loading up. My brush isn't really rinsed out, and I'm loading up a bunch of the white. And what that does is it gives me white seafoam color, but not such a bright white. I'm going to come to the edge of this little wave, and I'm going to just tap this in. See how I'm tapping? I'm just tapping this in with this little brush, aren't I? Oh, me foam. Some of the foamy foams. Fun stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Little, little, so my strokes go a little bit and then they lift and they go a little bit. They go, go a little bit and they lift it up and go a little bit. It's like a dot printer. Look at that. Look at that. Sometimes I'll see spot and I'll say, oh, you should have a little wave. It changes every time. <laughs> I get all excited. I'm like, oh, that's a nice little wave. Have a little wave. It's fun stuff for me. As I'm loading up, I'm going to get a bit of my yellow into this, and I'm going to go like this. You can kind of see how I've done. And I'll go ahead and grab, see if I can get a little more of that twin foam green into it with the canacridone. And, oh, there we go. So that is, you'll notice that grays that yellow a bit too. Important stuff when the yellow grays. So first thing is I'm going to come and I'm going to make a little wave coming in this way. And then watch this. <gasps> Isn't that fun? Let's uh, make some of these coming back. For the little foamy bits, right? Load, load, load. Now, like right here, we could sit there and say that this one kind of comes forward and goes like that. What? Yeah, we did that. How did we do that? That was so cool, but we did it. And look, we're going to follow that little forward. So that's a wave that came in earlier at a different angle, isn't it? Yeah. So now we've got the wave that came in earlier at a different angle. We've got these other waves coming in. I'm going to rinse out just a little bit. Oh, 
I'm going to load up just one, just one little quick second. I'm going to oh, yeah. get just a smidge of my aqua onto this, but I want a lot of white on here. I want to show you guys how you can come along here. Just make sure that that looks like a little wave that rushed in. All right, now what? Oh, sorry. So as I'm reading chat, sometimes, you know, I have oh, oh, obvious moments, so mm -hmm. I kind of laugh. Anyway, so Beth was yes. asking, uh, what about the Joseph Horato chant uh, poem? And I was like, well, what? poem because he did a lot of poems and she was like well the one that Sinman posted with this painting on Facebook and I was like oh well that's much more specific I should ask her about that um I like poetry and I read some poetry blogs and where they're under public domain I can reshare them sometimes I will if I feel like they speak to a painting well yeah he was uh he was born 1837 died 1928 <laughs> I think uh, I tried to make sure there was all that credit so if you liked him you could find yeah. more of his stuff yeah I try to do that where I can um, if I share somebody currently, I really try to link, 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 link back to them. But that was like the most information I can give you. And you'll be able to find like a lot of his stuff. I think um, artists and writers and poets, we kind of go together, add some musicians in the mix, and it's a whole retreat, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's really where I was coming from with that. All right. I'm going to add some more like thought out seafoam. I'm going to get a little of my yellow I, I and my white, just is pure yellow, pure white. You guys see me loading up really heavy? So first, I'm going to come along here, and this is going to be about tapping just some. Now, Tap unicorns some. do this, right? Yes. This is sea foams or by unicorns? Sea foam is always by unicorn. All right. Bring some of that there. See how I use that calligraphy stroke to make that happen? Back up there a little bit, yeah. All right, let's just get some more of that calligraphy stroke in, and that just pulls us in. It really helps us. And then I might pull that down. That's always fun to... The little area you know is wet. Pull it straight down. Let's hit that wave. Hit that wave. But it's not a poem like I could like recite by heart or anything. I actually don't really have any poems that I can recite by heart. But then in, in all truth, I don't have Christmas songs I can do that with either. So <laughs> that's just a me problem. Well, you know. Uh, and not a lack of fayette dub. It's just. But you can look at like a quarter of a painting and tell you who did it what what material it was was the you know, the style of like art like you can tell more about paintings like than anyone i know it's not, sometimes so. not people's favorite talent in mine we all have things we fall deep i like music so yeah. i can hear half a beat and generally know what song it was so that bright bright <sighs> white that's really important when you're doing these because that's what's going to make like you know, a wave feel more complete, isn't it? I like this so much. All right, we're almost done. We have the last thing to do. Really? Yeah. This has gone so fast. It has, and that's why I consider this a much easier seascape. I will never, ever, st you know what, actually, I'm going to show you one little trick, though. Okay. That you guys are going to love. Get a little white out. Get a little white out. Not like the typewriter correcting fluid that you probably have never heard of that was called white out. But <laughs> this other stuff. Now you want to take your white. twin and just have just a smidge of white into it. It's just a couple places on your back beach. Just hit this streak. See, I'm just on the toe of my brush. I have a very complicated seascape that I did at Nanta. And I, the whole time I was painting it, I was like, how could I make this a little easier? Because <laughs> it was hard for me. There's a lot going on. And so these were a lot of the colors and paint tricks that I got to do. See how that weird little pop of Quinn is just pop. Oh, man. It just looks amazing. All right. I want to really rinse this out. I may actually get a whole clean brush because I want the next bit to be, I'll get, I'll include everything in here. You wouldn't have to use every brush that I'm listing. I'm going to get like this number four Cambridge. I'm going to dip in water. I'm going to load up with some just yellow. I don't really want it tinted with anything else. I'll get some white into it so it doesn't go cray cray on me like this. I'm going to pull some of that back. Glaze. All 
right here on the I go to the corner of my brush to get that part done where the water is moving the light might move See what I'm saying mm-hmm now let's uh make sure that we've uh put it coming down our sea foam right this little pop Let me get some just white. Make sure that there's a little bit of that into the reflection. I'm going to check my, oh, there you go, reflection coming down. That's the best part. Mm -hmm. So when you're all done with the painting, it can be nice to do a maker's mark. And how I might do that is to get a small detail brush. And I think I'll take a little of my purple and a little of my sand color together. So this is going to show, but it goes with the painting. One of the things, if you're with me a while, you'll notice that a lot of times when I'm signing, I'll try to sign in a way that works with the painting. And this particular one... I think I'll go ahead and sign right here. I don't ever include the year on the front of the back of the painting. If you really want to keep track of the year, it's actually a better idea to keep files of when a painting was made. And the reason for that is, is that, um, you do want your family and yourself to know when you made things, but if you ever decide to sell your artwork, uh, collectors sometimes will weirdly go, well, if that was done in 1970, it must be like too old or something. I don't know. There's like no sell-on date with art, but there is. So just as a little tip for you guys that are selling, keep those dates in files so you know how you progressed and you know how you grew. But that way your artwork is always eternal and fresh, like a Dorian Gray. Weird bubbles. <gasps> I hope you guys had a really good time today. I hope you surprised yourself at the kind of seascape that you're actually capable of. I'm never going to stop working at ways to try to make this easier and better for you guys. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what your experiences are. Definitely, you know, we'll see all your comments in the replay, but leave a comment after. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and if you need a last minute Father's Day gift, come back tomorrow, because at 2 o'clock, we're going to hook you up. Or also, if you like stag, just in general, for no other reason than you like them. We'll see you tomorrow. Be good to yourselves, be good to yourself, and we'll see you with the easel really soon. Bye-bye!